so a quick risk disclosure, just something that you know industry asks you to do. Um, you can read it as I speak. For the most part, I'd like to be able to teach you something here. Um, this is, you know, if you can walk away and learn something, that's great. Um, and, you know, the, the good thing about education is you pick what you think works for you. I don't think you, you need to take everything that you see. Um, so this is where I came from. I thought you'd have a, a, you know, a little bit of a kick of the old days. This is how the floor looked in 1998. I was on the floor of the exchange. As you know, you, you heard from uh, the sponsor that um, I worked for mul multiple institutions. I ran operations, traded for myself. Uh, feeling kind of old when I talk about it, but I'm still here. So this is, uh, you know, the floor was where the edge was, and it was it's a totally different um, type of uh, edge that we have now. Uh, this is me today. For those who know, uh, probably know my wife, uh, Linda Rashke, she is well a veteran. Um, pro we probably, because she was a client for so long and uh, we're both technicians, it's probably one of the biggest reasons that you know, we uh, hooked up, other than many others that are, can't mention, but very good. Um, so this is, you know, I don't think everybody needs to have that many screens, you know, but um, I like watching all these different markets. I think you should only follow a couple and be a market maker or an expert in a couple. Uh, so I, I want to get into a little uh, the concept a little bit about what the market is because you know we tend to get so caught up with this whole uh, you know idea of a multiple indicators, a million things to watch, and should I buy, should I sell? One says buy, one says sell, whatever. Um, but you got to remember, you know, that ultimately the market's pretty simple in, in the big picture. Uh, it's basically an auction and you want to know who has control of the auction. Based on that, uh, you can tell if the market's going to follow through or not or what kind of day it is. Short-term traders, long-term traders. The short-term traders are guys like me and you. I'm sure we're not going to move the markets. When I was on the floor, even when I traded 10 and 20s, that doesn't really move the market. It's the uh, institutional funds, the masses and you know the the huge hedge funds that uh, when they come to the market they can take it to a new level and find a new place to trade uh, a new value in the market. So, like I said, the long term trader is the hedge funds, institutional players, you know, and they're looking to uh, at bigger time frames. You know, when Tudor would give me an order to buy a thousand big S and P's, that's the equivalent of two thousand bigs because they split the contract in 10,000 E-minis. And I bought as many as 30,000 E-minis if you want to look at it. Um, he wasn't looking to get out in two handles. Those are the long-term traders. You know, they're moving big money. Short-term short traders, the black box market makers, you're looking for a tick or two. Uh, day traders, um, you know, they, they get a, a little profit, they take it, right? So I'm moving a little bit quick so we can get get to where we got to go. For those who uh, have ever looked at market profile, you probably uh, know what this looks like, uh, you know, this bell curve, uh, the letters, uh, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, if you're interested in a class or something later on, I might give one, but uh, or I will. But this, in, just to give you an idea, this is what a, a short trader, uh, short-term traders look like this is your bell curve on a market profile, and that's usually uh, telling you that you got a tail on each side. This is the point of control right here, where most of the traders are trading. Uh, you know the most traded spot of the day, or the biggest volume, and you can see the market just cannot, you know, follow through, and it's usually because there's no volume. In this case, this is where you have uh, double in, uh, a double distribution, they call it, uh, market profile. And we'll get into, uh, you can read up a little bit uh, later, I'll give you a couple books to look at. But the whole point is not necessarily to teach market profile, but kind of give you the concept. Uh, basically, the market opened up here, went up, came back and retested it just to verify this is a good bottom and then the market started trending. And when you see this trend, usually a trend like that is, is uh, 
is driven by the bigger long-term traders, the hedge funds and all that. Here's an example of a chart. These are volume candles. I'll get into later, but they're, the thicker the bar, the more the volume. But here's a market profile the exact same day, and you can see what that looks like. This blue area is where 70% of the trading took place. This is where the point of control is. Okay? So the value area is usually kind of a magnet. The point of control is also a magnet. It, it, it's like the mean uh, in the market, where the market seems to eventually go backwards comfortable. Uh, unless there's extreme amount of volume driven uh, through new highs or lows with increased uh, volume behind it. Here's an example uh, where we have a double distribution here. It started here. You can see the market dropped here and it, re it started to redistribute down here. This is a bar chart showing the market profile right next to it. So you can see on a 30-minute bar how the market trended lower and ended up here. So this is controlled by what I would say the longer-term trader. This is controlled by this day by the short-term trader. You can see the market went up, came down, kind of just kept coming back to the mean. Okay. So same thing here, long-term trader. You know, we started here and it was driven straight up and closed up here. Um, now, do we know why the market went up there? I mean, I, I don't really uh, have any connection to be calling every hedge fund or institutional uh, player, but the idea is to be able to try to find and see, see it on the screen by using different tools. So let's go back to the short-term trader. Bell curve, but even just look at a regular bar chart, and if you could pretty much look at volume or draw a line through the middle of it, uh, it kind of looks like a shish kebab. And for those Greeks out there, like a souflaki, I call it the souflaki stick. Um, here's a good example of a short-term trading day. Uh, these are volume candles, so it, it, you could see the volume picking up and then dying out on the highs, doing nothing, and then coming right back down. Retest of the highs with no volume. Again, if there's no institutional buying to take this new highs, you're going to revert back to the mean. So the longer term trader, um, you know, there's ways to look at the longer term trader. Basically, you know, when funds are being controlled by the big hedge funds. Um, I used to execute for the index funds, and we'll get into the uh, last half an hour, how crazy that is, not only in the index funds, but in multiple other uh, futures products that are used to hedge for the long and short funds. But meanwhile, looking at the longer term traders, it, trading, uh, longer term trader is basically more of a trend type of chart that you see with, you know, a company by volume. Again, double distribution, the market moved higher. So let's look now at uh, a daily chart. These little green dots, and I'll show you what those are, uh, it's something that I created myself, which is a basic three, three bar look back uh, for reversals to kind of guide me to see if we're still in a trend, okay? If we're still in a trend, and you see volume, and it's preceded by volume, that's when you can stay long until finally you see a point where right here you can see where we took a rest. I got a little bit of a reversal. Market pretty much went sideways with no volume and then uh, continued the trend back up so you can get long again. Then you can see here there is no volume, so you get a lot of chop. So we go from this this trend, which is driven probably by longer term traders, and then finally finishing off over here sideways by the market taking a rest and the little short term traders uh, are trading back and forth. So I'm kind of moving quick so we can get you some education and hopefully you learned something from this. Uh, if you look at consolidation, Market profile, you, you can kind of say that 
consolidation could be where the value area is. It's where most of the trading took place. Market is comfortable at that point, and you could probably draw a line through the middle of this, and you can see we just keep wrapping around it. The only time you really want to get long, you can see no volume here. These bars aren't that wide, very little here. But look what happens when finally the longer term trader comes in and you see the volume pick up. So the candle gets wider when there's volume. Now, not everybody has this charting system, but you can look at volume on your charts in other ways. Um, this is Photon Trader. It's something I created that uh, our firm owns, but uh, you can probably find other ways to look at volume. I just found this to be really a very clear way of looking at it. But you can see the market continually went higher. And this was not created by me and you or the smaller trader trading tens and twenties or ones and twos. For sure there was good volume and uh, participation by the institutions. <clears throat> um, this is just kind of, uh, I threw a bunch of different charts together. Here's a market profile with a bar chart. This is short-term traders, long-term traders. But if you look at the right, you can see where high volume and low volume attracts. Um, so this is a nice little indication. These charts, uh, the, you know, for market profile, I do like window trader. So that's what these are. Window trader is good market profile chart. Here's a recent chart, a daily chart of the S&Ps. Now what's really funny is <laughs> um, we have gone nowhere really if you look at the big scheme of things. You know we're pretty much in a hundred point uh, sideways market. Big swings, big you know kind of a big range but you can see here um, where you know there's no volume on these days and when we get to the when we got up here it just died and then the market just drifted back lower kind of like creating this little middle line from here to here 50 percent retracement if you want to call it but really kind of a point of control where the market seems to want to come back here we go not much volume market reversed same thing here until we come out of this with big volume and so, you know, everybody says, you know, are you bullish or are you bearish? Pretty neutral. You got to just, you know, look at each day, and uh, you know, keep keep in mind that we're in this one big sideways trend until the market really breaks out with consistent volume. Um, and when that happens, chances are that's when uh, there is participation and some commitment by the big funds. So uh, let's see. Okay, let's move forward. Volume. The reason why you know I'm concentrating a little on volume today uh, is a that we have 35 minutes, 40 minutes to make a, a good point. But it is also one of the most important things to look at. Why is that? So volume, when it was on the floor of the exchange, used to be estimated and there was no edge off the floor because you really didn't know what was going on. Even if you had someone like myself on the floor could give you a little bit of uh, flavor of what was going on in some insight in the pit. The guys in the pit saw the volume, they could feel it, they really knew what was going on. The volume that you saw on the floor of the exchange before electronic markets came about was all estimated. So they took a three-day estimate of volume for that time, and that was the volume. So it was completely useless. Today, it's a level playing field. And if you have a very fast system, you'll be able to get in real time, in milliseconds, the volume as, it's being, as the market's moving. So it's a real-time indicator, not a lagging like stochastics or something like that, uh, even moving averages. It's a real-time. There's hardly anything that is real time. So that's why I feel it's important. I'm coming from the floor, I know it's important. Um, volume also confirms breakouts on charting patterns, you know, whether it's a flag or it's a, you know, uh, head and shoulders and basic. That it really helps you confirm basic um, patterns that, you know, we, we could still use today. Light volume usually indicates it's a short-term trading day and it's just little guys scalping back and forth. 
And when you see light volume, that's when you can do the overbought and oversold indicators. You definitely don't want to do the overbought and oversold indicators in a trending market because you know you'll get run over, and I'm sure we've all had a piece of that action. Um, so, and generally, light volume days tend to be sideways days. So, if you can spot volume coming into the market, it helps you know if there's a confirm on the volume. Here you can see on a regular candle, you can't really tell without looking at volume. Even down here, it's very kind of difficult. You can see when we broke past this high, how the volume picked up, and this is a five-minute bar, and then the market continued higher. So, you know, that's for me, those kind of indicators are really, really important because I spent 25 to 28 years on the floor of the exchange, you know, trying to interpret volume from the pit. And I, I could tell if I was in the pit trading and I was bidding on a new high and I can hear myself that I was for sure wrong and I was ready to hit the first bid. So uh, if I was bidding on a new high and Goldman and Merrill and all these big houses were bidding uh, 500 or 1,000 behind me, I felt pretty confident that there'd be a follow through on new highs or lows if the volume came in behind me. Here's another example of kind of just trading, moseying along until, boom, we come out of here with good volume. It starts to pick up, and chances are uh, on this particular type of uh, chart, uh, photon chart, the volume starts out slow, and this bar keeps growing, and then it gives you the, uh, you know, pretty much the indication of the direction and that uh, a confirmation of volume. Here's another example. For those who uh, look at market profile, the value area again is where 70% of the trading takes place. And you know, you pretty much at the top of the uh, value area and uh, the bottom of the value area, either consolidation, if you want to call it. For those who are uh, look at bars, which are it's fine. It's just the concept is that when you get a reversal. You can expect to maybe even go back down to the bottom of it or the point of control, the middle, where most of the trading, uh, the biggest amount of volume uh, traded or the uh, where the market traded the most. So until the market really comes out of it with some volume, uh, you don't want to get along. Once the market comes out of the value area or consolidation with volume, uh, normally, you would be looking once the market reverses to the downside to rebuy it at the top of the consolidated area. So let me repeat that because this is very important. So you have the sideways consolidation, comes out with volume, rallies, right? Now there's going to be a reversal or profit taking. Doesn't mean now we're going to go down and we're bearish, it's just profit taking. In this case, you can see volume died as we got back close to this. Previous highs act as support for those, you know, basic, you know, uh, things to know. And then the market continued higher, and that's where you would buy it. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, the three bar reversal that I uh, created. This is uh, an example on a daily uh, in May, I believe it was like last year where we had 23 updates, and everybody kept on telling me like, oh, the market's going to sell up big, oh, you know, got to be bearish, and I just could not see it. And I said, I don't know what you're looking at. And, and the reason why is these, the, these little reversals, you know, I have to wait for a real reason to sell it. If I'm, you know, so I created this so that I didn't get suckered out when the market was slow and it looked like, oh, you know, we're going to come back down, right? Um, and it's so easy to get pushed out of a trade because you see sideways a sideways market, but you're still in an uptrend. We have an uptrend here, but we also have a reversal. Um, these reversal dots uh, still showing that we're in an uptrend, right? This is how I uh, calculate it. Uh, if you don't, if you don't have a uh, photon, I know there's a lot of photon trader uh, customers on there. Uh, but if you don't, 
you can calculate it yourself. It's not that hard. Um, this is the way I calculate it. Everybody has a different reversal. It's fairly simple, but I've tried multiple different counts, and this works for me. Let's just start from a neutral bar. This is a neutral bar. This bar here is higher than a two-bar look back, which is three with the current bar. And this low is higher than the two bars combined. You, know, you can see whether this bar was lower or not, this bar is higher. So you get a plus one count, you get a green dot. Same thing here. This is higher than the last three. This is higher than the last two lows. Or I should say this is higher than the last two highs. And you can see the same thing for this. This is actually a little higher than this, continued to trend higher. And then you have a neutral bar, which basically is in the middle of the two. So it's not a negative, it's just the rest, if you want to call it. Um, so if you get a neutral bar and you just want to wait till you get a confirmation of the breakout, which would be here again, and get back in, you could do that. So you see, that's how I calculate this. Everybody see that? Uh, let me stop for a second. Can you hear me okay and everything, you know, you guys are alive and breathing? Give me a signal. Good. Good. You can always have coffee when you listen to these things. Okay, so as the market's going higher, you can see that we didn't get a sell until here. And, and at that point, you're out. And you broke a trend line on top of it, and you've got a reversal. So. If you look at that actual move, that was a huge move. That was a 130-point rally in May of that month. You can use it as a buy and sell uh, signal, uh, but I wouldn't use it alone. But like here in gold, you can see uh, we didn't get a reversal here. And then we got a reversal here to sell. And we got a buy. So you can do it, but I use multiple indicators that you know I'll, I'll touch on some of them right now. I definitely want to give you something here that you can at least try and at least use. Um, moving averages. I do like moving averages. Um, in the day when there was no charts, unfortunately, I spent a lot of money testing moving averages back in the 80s when there was no computers. So I literally was hand charting. He had a, a operation that I ran, but I also had a kid that worked for me that just charted all day long, a 15-minute chart, and he would calculate, um, let's say if it was a 10 moving average, he would calculate, uh, add up the 10 closes, divided by 10, and plot the dot. That's how long ago I started. That's why I got gray hair. Well, right now, you know, obviously, moving averages are simple. There's a million indicators you can use. But that's the the moving averages I use today, I actually hand tested and forward tested years ago. Um, I feel they're pretty good, and um, I don't have any, I'm not touting any results or anything. You try them for yourself and see if you want to calculate them. So this here is a 30 high moving average and a 30 low. Now, what does that mean? You're taking the last 30 highs and the last 30 lows, and you're plotting it. And the reason why I like uh, high-low moving averages is there's way too much mar uh, noise in the market. There's always been a bit of noise. And moving averages are great for crosses only when there's volatility. When there is volatility, they're the worst. So um, overall, you know, you can improve your uh, win ratio by not playing the market on crosses or with this kind of system when there's no volatility, no volume. So in other words, it's a, a short, short-term trading day. Um, I hope you guys understand that. So, so my point is if, if the market could get above 30, the average of 30 highs, which is the number that seemed to work the best for me, then there's, there's a good chance it's going to rally. In this case, it got above the 30 high, Close there, and I got a reversal buy, and then the market moved higher. Okay, pretty basic, you know. And then this 310 oscillator is uh, this was actually uh, created by my wife Linda Reschke, 
and I like it. It's the difference between the three and the ten moving average with a sixteen sl uh, slow moving average behind it. Now let's look at the next next deal here. So we add in a thirty high and thirty low. We also have the PAV, right? And then we can see volume picking up right at this point on this close, and we got above that high. You could see the market moved higher. Um, now, on a five-minute chart, getting four handles is a pretty good, pretty good deal. Um, so you got to look at what, depending on what chart you're looking at, you have to um, size up your your profit uh, potential. And, uh, be, and and keep your expectations um, reasonable. In this case here, when the market went higher, you put your sell stop below here when you buy here. And th that's another thing about a high low system is it pretty much tells you a couple ticks below the 30 low. If you're if, you, if it gets below there, something could be wrong. Maybe it's it, it's all over. You know, it's all over again. I mean, you know, that's the market's either trending where the system is not working or some other uh, you know some big sellers came in the market here's three buy signals we broke out of here closed above the 30 I you got a PAV reversal we broke this trend okay I like adding in um, uh, trend lines and, and uh, patterns and, and using patterns um, I think we get so overly uh, analytical that you just pretty much convince yourself either not to trade or you really don't have a good feeling or uh, you're not confident of pulling the trigger. Um, so again, this is the 30 high moving average. It's, it's the average of the last 30 highs and this is the 30 low, the average of the last 30 lows. I, I was asked to repeat that again. so. Uh, I want to make sure everybody can see that. All right, so here's just another example. Um, you can see here's like a little flag, market moved up, and this is where it didn't go back below the 30 low. So when the volume died out, you can rebuy it on a reversal. Um, so now what I'm going to talk about is uh, with looking at this chart, when I was on the floor of the exchange, I executed for a lot of big funds. Some of the big funds I executed for were index funds, like the RIDEX or, I don't know, some of the other funds out there um, that are big, where they have to hedge in the futures markets against their imbalances. Now, that word uh, trade imbalances gets thrown around, and a lot of people don't even understand it. And some people throw out something like they know the trade, you know, the imbalance. It's not not easy to know it. Even, you know, some think they do. There's so many index funds; it's not funny. Uh, just taking the ES, for instance, right? What's an index fund? Uh, for those that don't know, um, let's say it's an S&P long fund. The RIDEX is one of them that has it. So they have the right. They have the index long fund and a short fund. When you buy 100 shares of the long fund, you're you're buying the right to be long the entire index. Okay. So what happens is if if you buy 100 shares of the long fund, you're basically not really just getting in right there at the market. You're buying the shares, but the fund itself won't run in and buy. Oh. You know, one e-money, or, or you can't even buy a half e-money that's less than 100 shares. So they have to wait to a certain time, figure out how many longs they have, how many shorts for the, the long funds and the short funds. And for the e-minis, that period generally is between 2:30 and 3 that you know, they close it, and then they start to hedge because they have to be in the market. So. You can't be a long index fund and not be long, and then you would be a bucket shop, you know, maybe in China, <laughs> but not here. I mean, there's uh, regulations. So, um, so if you're long the index funds, that means that you you think the market's going higher, and you want to be long the all 500 stocks by buying 100 shares of the long fund. We get that? 
so far. So, so what happened when I was on the floor of the exchange, I started to, uh, one of my big customers were index funds. And they would call me up at 2.30 and say, okay, we have 900 million coming in and we have 300 million going out. What that means is they got $900 million worth of stock index long fund shares that want in at 2.30. By, through the day, they've been buying it. And they have like 300 of the short fund for the funds that to give you the right to be short, right? So what does it mean? Is there's 600 million uh, imbalance to the upside that they have to hedge. So they have to hedge, and what they do is most, almost most of those funds, because of the leverage that futures have, they hedge in the ES. But it doesn't matter. They had, it this goes on clear across the board in single stocks, basket of stocks. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, hedging going on in the last half an hour. And that's why I'm sure some of you wonder what the hell happened. You know, you go, okay, you know, why did the market, like, we're on our highs, it didn't even correct, and it went another 10 handles or five handles. And, and that's because these funds are so powerful. They have no choice but to get in. They can't play. They're not trying to make money on it. They, ha they owe the customer a hedge. Now, the three o'clock number is the mark that the customer gets. It's not like you get a little confirmation from somebody saying that, you know, uh, this is your fill. They have to, money-wise, that's the mark. Now, if their average buy between 2.30 and 3 is below that, they're going to make money on the hedge. If it's a little bit above it, they're going to lose a little bit. Either way, though, the hedge is marked on the three o'clock close. There was a, uh, a study done after I've been doing this for years and filling, and I never saw anything on it about how the uh, last, you know, um, the rebalancing, as we call it, of the markets in the last half an hour, even the close, uh, the close can make up 16.8%. That was the study done in some Forbes magazine. Uh, and I, I thought it's funny that finally somebody came out with a study that 16.8% of the volume was at the close, like the last couple minutes. All right, so it's real important. That's a whole trade in itself. Oops. Oh. All right, so here's another example where at 2.30, the market was up all day, right? It looked like it was going lower, but the imbalances were by. Slowly the market went up, and look at the thickness in the bars. This is the day, five-minute chart. Look at the volume, the very end, and this is the close, three o'clock. Once the three o'clock bell rings, there's a little hedging done, like right a minute afterwards. They have some uh, uh, some funds are able to hedge a, probably a minute or two after, but as it's the close, this is what the customer's out, and you can see the market moved higher. This is a recent one. I tried to get some recent shots because uh, uh, I'm not great at doing these things, but I, I, I definitely want to uh, uh, give you the best um, uh, snapshots of some recent markets so you can see what I'm talking about. This is, uh, I think I grabbed this on the 8th or the 11th of August, this, and you can see in this day, how the market rallied the last five minutes. Um, at this point, we we're up, uh, and I believe you know the market was lower before that, but the market moved higher, and you could see the three o'clock, and you could just see the the market moving. Now you've got a lot of other indicators that you can follow. You can follow um, uh, the PAV, uh, you know, and or some kind of reversal. I don't want to coin. The, you know, all reversals, uh, PAV, that's just the name I gave it for Pavlados. <laughs> but, um, and then you can, if you have a, this is a 10 moving average, 10 close, I use a 10 close to kind of give me the direction. In this particular chart, I like to see the slope change on the 10. So if it's green, you know, I want to wait till this actually, the slope is turned down if I want to get short. Uh, when you're long, you really want the slope on the shorter term moving average to be positive. Uh, you don't want to be shorting it 
the first time through it because chances are that it's a fake out. So we have all these things happening. We're above the 30 high. We've got a little reversal the upside, volume increased. Here's another example. Um, this is the ES on a down, you know, on a down day. Market pulled back. Everybody thought, oh, we might go higher, but you know, market slowly trended down. And you would think at this point, oh, that's a bull flag, possibly, but no, because the imbalances were to the downside. And I'll get into um, a little bit about how you can look for them. But let me see how we're doing on timing. I was told I got to keep on my toes. I had way too many slides earlier. So you can see the you know when the 230 bell the selling came in huge volume and then the three o'clock close this is the crude um, that was this was yesterday uh, I want to talk about the crude because it's done in multiple markets between 1 and 130 to 135 they have to get into the market based on the uh, the kind of day it is and the, there is imbalances and they hedge their imbalances and accrue just as well and you can see this if you look at the uh, advanced decline at the same time you look at the volume and you can see the market's been down most of the day there, there will be a period and you look for the reversal that the market could sell off but look at the volume and I mean this was a very clear move and we had a nice sell-off and it was a total of 70 points in the last half an hour which is quite a bit. This was the crude yesterday. Um, here's another example I took from way back. Uh, I didn't have time to make one for this, but this is a time and sales feature that Photon has, but I think there's other, there might be some other uh, front ends they have it, but uh, our time and sales, it, you know, I created myself because I want to see if there's trading on a bid, trading on the offer, but look at the amount of uh, orders that came in 50 50 50 that means they're trading on the bid they're selling hitting the bid so this gives you a little idea too this is one of the things I look at in the last half an hour I like indicators I have different indicators as, as you see but I start to do a little tape reading if you want to call it I don't know if that's a great word to use because it, it's not really tape reading necessarily but I use that uh, and looking for order flow so I can kind of spot to see uh, what the big boys are doing and the big boys aren't really playing games if they have to sell they just start selling maybe they do it in iceberg orders or maybe they do it like this you know 50 50 50 one you know first 50 gets filled another 50 goes in another one this is a time in sales and this here I filter to 30 contracts and above because I don't care about the ones and the twos. And actually, you could see the time here. This is all at <laughs> the last minute, you know, two minutes before. So you can see the volume coming in. I have it clearing out every two seconds. So this is a good example. And this was what we're looking at right now. Look at the volume the last minute, you know, basically. You can see it here. And chances are this was just a one millisecond which it looks like snapshot pretty much of the market. So let's look at the market how it was before. There was no no trading going on with 30 contracts or above before like at 220. And you can see here, look at the size here, the last minute, the difference. So in other words, <clears throat> Uh, the big funds can't start hedging till 2.30. Uh, they have to have a shutoff period where they calculate their hedges, and then from there they got to decide, should I start selling early or should I wait till the last 5, 10 minutes? And that was my job on the floor when I was executing for the funds. Uh, they would say, okay, we got to sell 2,800 big S&Ps uh, at 2.30. What do you think? And based on, I would look at all my indicators and see in a pit and see the volume and see if we have to rush and sell it or should we wait a little bit or maybe I start selling 100 at a time and then I bang the last five minutes and try to push the market my way. So, um, you know, I can't get too far into that because it's just, a, you know, it takes a lot more than uh, whatever time I got left, you know. So, um, 
these pictures uh, I, I didn't make, but I think they're kind of funny. Uh, but it's true, you know. Um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm sure you've gotten caught where, uh, you know, hey, you don't know what's going on because it's not a normal chart pattern. You, you say, how come it's going one way so hard, you know? And you think it's like some news or whatever. No, look every day. Just take the e e ES. 230 to 3 and you know uh, the, the the takeaway from here it, it, to help you you know watch it is if you have a big day where the market's down over 1% to 2% there's a good chance last half an hour you're going to see a sell off and they're going to drive it hard because the imbalances will be to the downside if if it's uh, a big up day well, same thing, one to two percent. But you you wait for other indicators to wait. You know, also kind of back up your direction. If you don't have buy indicators and you have a big up day, you wait for a reversal. Wait for you know breakout. Whether you use your moving averages or you know mine or something different, and or the reversals, and then you go with it. No, nothing's a hundred percent because we have. Um, I found like this summer's been a little bit uh, thin and quiet. Uh, because we're in this big um, consolidation pattern, but you still have those moves like you saw today in the crude. And the E-minis were kind of sideways. We didn't have a real big down move but today, so I, I'm sure the imbalances, I didn't get a chance to really uh, look too deep into it, but the imbalances weren't that big. So... Uh, so knowledge, you know, this, you know, like I said, I didn't make these shots, but I think they're, they're good. Uh, just to re remember that having the knowledge is uh, really important. It's part of the game, and uh, trying to find out really what the big boys are doing a little bit really helps because you know then you don't get run over by a freight train. So the longer term traders or the institutions, hedge funds, if they're driving the market higher, you don't want to stand in front of it. Uh, you know the, the corny saying that the trend is your friend is it's pretty corny but it's true and it's always been that way if there's a trend you don't want to be cute and trying to sell rallies look to buy dips if there's no trend and, it, and it's trading sideways you don't want to buy a breakout of a high or low unless there's volume telling you that you have some help so you've got some little uh, some company, as I would say on the floor, we got we have company. You know, if I was buying, you know. Um, so uh, I'm doing a, uh, a little educational thing on uh, Wednesday, September 16th, to get more into this. Concentrate on uh, the imbalances, uh, some of my indicators, um, and I'm. Uh, Partner, I've got a little partner here with uh, Trade Thirsty, great company. They they deliver some nice and you know education. I've never done this. This is the first time I ever uh, I've done multiple webinars, but you know uh, a live paid one. And I've done you know uh, in person. I've done some seminars at trade shows and that. But so this is September 16th, and. Uh, uh, Basically, uh, it's going to be two hours um, of watching or, you know, uh, going over the indicators and looking at the markets on the close of the day before, following the 17th. Uh, you know, it, it <laughs> I didn't put these together, but it's pretty funny. Uh, trading the tape with confidence. Well, you know, knowing that if you're getting in the market, at least you, you're watching uh, what the bigger guys are doing the last half an hour. If you're not going to be watching um, the market that way the last half an hour, you're better off not trading because you could get run over. And, you know, at least have an idea that um, the trend might go one way or another. And then I'm, I'm going to go over all my strategies and uh, as much as I can for two hours. It's, you know, I want it's going to be. Uh, I like to be able to deliver and give somebody, you know, give somebody uh, value, and it's going to be uh, pretty reasonable. Um, and also, I'm doing some trade alerts. I'm trying this for the first time. 
where for one month, I'll, you know, with this, you'll get one month's trading uh, trade alerts. And that's when I see, I think the markets are going higher and, uh, you know, I'll send out an alert saying that, you know, I think the trading balance is the upside and, you know, there could be a buy right here. And if we go below this level, I wouldn't be in, that kind of thing. And I think it might be helpful. Uh, you don't have to play every move, but if you're in a market, it, it you know, might give you some guidance so that either if you're long and I call long, that, you know, you could feel confident, at least uh, I feel the big boys are buying, that kind of thing. Um, it's the first time I ever uh, did this, nah, you know, I'm a terrible salesman. I, this is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Trade Thirsty is doing this, and it's ninety-seven dollars. And uh, you know, uh, I can't really go out to eat at a good place for ninety-seven. I figure it was fair. If you're interested, um, you can sign up. If not, that's fine. Um, I, I just hope that you got something out of the uh, the course, because <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I feel it's it's good karma if somebody learns something. I've had clients from years ago that uh, are real happy. You know, some of them became uh, CTAs or, or hedge funds or traders in a pit, um, and and I'm glad to see that. It's it's good when you can help somebody. The um, last 37 years, I could tell you, you know, which I'll get into the course a little bit. There's a lot of little uh, tips that uh, trading tips and some electronic trading tips too that you probably want to know and it could help you. 